you know, I don't, I, some days I wonder why I even get out of bed. Yesterday, after not starting for months, the crane truck started up okay. I mean, it cranked a little while, but it popped off and it fired up. Today, and it ran great yesterday too. I had it sitting here running for a good while. It idled real nice, running pretty smooth. The carburetor definitely needs rebuilt on it, but I mean, it was functioning fine. Today, I've had the truck hooked up to it, charging on it, and been cranking on it and cranking on it for every bit of 20 minutes now. And this thing will not fire for nothing. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Matt. Behind me, this beautiful 1988-89 F700 crane truck that I bought at an auction last year. Uh, if you haven't seen it, there's a whole series of videos on bringing this thing back to life. I paid $700 at the auction for it. I had to yank the motor out, it was all locked up, tore it apart, got it running again, slapped it back together, and lo and behold, that beautiful crane stretches out like 53 feet or something like that. Works like a charm, it's perfect. So uh, the trouble I'm having right now is there was some odds and ends that I never completely finished up from yanking the motor and putting it back together. It came into the cold time of year and I just moved on to other things. I got uh, Project ADD like that. So, so in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on getting those little odds and ends that I didn't do last year, finished up, tied up, all the loose ends, and oh yeah, it doesn't run anymore. I don't know what happened, sitting over the winter, I come out here occasionally and I'd start it up and it ran. I pulled it up to where it's sitting right now, stretched it all out and got ready to use it to pull the engine out of my grader project which if you haven't seen, you'd probably want to check that out too. It's a pretty good one. But anyways, I parked it here and was planning on pulling the motor the next day. I came back out, hit the key. Again, it was running fine the day before. I hit the key and it just cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked. And it would spit and sputter like it wanted to run, but it just wouldn't run. So I know we have a fuel delivery issue. I never touched the carburetor on this engine. It is unfortunately a gas engine, if you didn't already know. I never touched the carburetor when I did the motor job, so there's probably all kind of problems with that carburetor. It didn't run the hottest, but it did run good enough to use it around here at the farm. I don't plan on taking this thing on the road. Anyway, today we're going to zap that carburetor off of there, take it home, tear it apart, and uh, rebuild that thing so she runs like brand new. Also, before I forget, if we get to the part where this thing's running and it sounds like crap and it sounds like it's missing, there's a big exhaust leak and everybody tells me, oh, fix that, but it's not worth my time. These exhaust leaks are always a pain on these trucks. It's a Ford, it has to have an exhaust leak. What good is a Ford that doesn't have an exhaust leak? It just Ugh, another gas engine. <laughs> in case you were wondering what locked up the engine in the first place, I was told it's this poor design right here. See, there's kind of like a puddle of water right there. That's a bad design on Ford's part. Uh, that water all comes down from the split in the hood here even when the hood's shut if this gas gets bad which it's very bad the water just comes down here and collects in this bowl that is the top of the air cleaner and it finds its way down into the engine and locks her up tight if you're not running it a whole lot now i have a mud flap that i was keeping over top of this thing but apparently in a fit of rage the last time this thing wouldn't run i forgot to reinstall it so here's to hoping that water didn't find its way into the engine again well the good news is that I don't see any signs of water getting down in there so we might be ahead there so this big ugly monstrosity right here is what I believe to be the culprit of most if not all of our problems uh, fairly straightforward to take off I think there might be a couple vacuum lines Got a couple throttle cables, uh, throttle linkage, fuel inlet, hose, a uh, couple wires, and it should pop right off. All right, should just lift right up off of here now. Yeah, look at that. Uh-oh. I see liquid down there. Hopefully that's just fuel. Yep. Luckily that's just fuel. So she was heavily flooded and dumping fuel into one side of the engine and bone dry in the other. So that could be a lot of our issue. Yeah. Interesting. 
Well, I guess I'm a bit ashamed to admit that this carburetor has, since I've taken it off the crane truck, has just been chilling on my workbench, getting progressively buried and unburied for the last four months or so. So, I've had the carburetor kit since like two days after I took it off. Just uh, haven't got the gumption to dive into this thing. But I would like to get my crane truck back to usable, so we'll go ahead and dive on in, I guess. You guys want to know a secret? I've never actually torn apart a full-size automotive carburetor. This will be the first time, right here, on camera, for thousands of people to mock me. Actually, <laughs> while we're admitting things on camera... When I tore the engine down in the crane truck that this guy sits on top of and did the old <clears throat> shade tree rebuild on it, that was the first time I'd ever torn apart a V8 on my own. I've messed with some smaller stuff, some inline sixes, things like that. Ooh, there's some rust in that guy. But uh, yeah, first time I'd done that. This guy got come off here. So there's like some sort of crossover or something or other here. Can't tell if that's a bolt. I think this should just come off of here. Don't force it. Get a bigger hammer. Something's happening. This does say remanufactured on here, so they're not original. Ugh. Well, it's not horrible, but there is some rust down in the bottom of the bowl. Well, everything seems to be about as clean, internally anyways, as clean as it's going to get. Um, I think it all looks pretty decent. It really wasn't bad at all. Like I said, I, I probably just had some water frozen in the line and it wouldn't pick up any more fuel. That's my guess. Uh, but this was a learning exercise, as I stated. Glad I did it. I did kind of figure out, you know, I'm just guessing now. I've never done it. But to set the floats on these things, I'm guessing that this is a level screw. And you pop that bad boy out. And you start turning this thing up until the fuel starts coming out of that hole. And then you go back a sea hair. And then crank that locking nut down. And imagine that should be your proper float level. But uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys will roast me in the comments.
right. Well, of course the camera died right as I was nearing the end of the assembly. But, it's all done. I think it looks good. 99% sure I have everything back together correctly. Let's go out and throw this thing on the old crane truck there. Uh, once we have it installed, I'm going to go ahead and check these float adjustments. All right, so here just illustrates another great reason I love flatbeds. Now, I've got a working platform. I didn't actually touch the truck. I think my strap rubbed it a little bit. No big deal. It's not like she's got a beauty queen uh, job ahead of her or nothing. Anyway, it's real easy. We can just stand on the back of the truck here and work like a human being instead of up on a step stool or something stupid. Let's see if we can't get the old hood open here. Ah. There we go. I wondered where that went. I think it took me longer to rebuild the carburetor than the whole stinking engine when I did that. There's the gasket that was on it when I bought it. It doesn't look awful, but I think I'm going to go ahead and change it. The one that come with our rebuild kit looks a bit nicer than that. Side note, watch these little spacers. This one almost went down our throat hole there. And you can't even fish it out with a magnet, so that wouldn't be good. Well, I probably already just fixed part of the issue from before. I didn't realize this port right here was going down into this EGR system thing that I've deleted. Um, I didn't realize, though. I thought this port was going in here, and it was blocked off because it's a separate flange. I, stupid me, I should have checked it. So anyways, this port was sucking air the whole time that I had it running previously to this. We should be able to reinstall this guy. And the old four barrel. pulled this dipstick here and maybe you guys can tell there maybe not it's way over full it's very thin and it reeks of gasoline so this thing was just dumping fuel uh, letting it sit on top of the rings that's why it wouldn't run before it was running crazy rich apparently so that means that we're gonna have to change the oil now that won't properly lubricate anything and I think we're just gonna go with some 1540 because that's what all the other YouTube mechanics are doing these days and it does kind of make sense to me and I have a lot of it so I think I'm, we'll get this thing running and drive it up onto the hard pack so I'm not laying in all the mud down here and we'll go ahead and put some better oil in it all right, I just threw some fresh batteries in this thing. It's about time to see if the old pig's gonna fire up. I have no small funnel to get the fuel down in here. Oh, that's plenty. Might take a bit of cranking. It's been sitting quite a while. Contact!
Even if it died right now, I could be happy because I can move it around with something else. It's been stuck like that with those legs down for four months, so that's, that's an improvement. It has occurred to me that changing the oil would be futile without first fixing the problem what ruined the oil in the first place. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust these carb float bowls because I'm pretty sure that's causing our issue here with the fuel one. I did do some research and watched a quick video to make sure I was going to do this right. So you take off this little screw on the side there and crack those locking nuts loose. But basically we just have to adjust it until we have just the teeniest little bit of fuel coming out of here in our little side viewing port here. All right, well, I finally got that figured out here. The videos of the carburetors online that I, I'd watched, their nut was the adjuster and the screw is the lock, but this carburetor is actually the opposite. Um, so I just turned the screw in to lower the level of the float and uh, pretty easy to set those. It wasn't too bad. And you see how much blow by I got going on this thing? <laughs> I knew it's going to have some blow by, and uh, it, I'm sure it will continue to have some blow by, but the paper thin oil gas mixture that we got in the engine right now isn't helping anything. So we're going to go ahead and get that drained out now that we got these floats set right. We'll pull it back into the little shop there. And, work on that. Hooray! We made it! Good lord, I was worried. Let's go ahead and get this nasty gas polluted oil out of this thing. If you work in heavy industry a lot, uh, you'll know that there's a big safety culture among everybody. And one of the things that they always talk about is a near miss. They want you to analyze and talk about things that nearly went wrong, nearly could have been catastrophic, but didn't. <laughs> now I am more of a safety second, maybe even third kind of guy. Uh, I do, I do appreciate safety, so there's always people giving me flack about safety. I believe that safety is something you should take personal accountability for, and it's not everybody else's job to keep you safe. Now, that being said, if you see a giant something or other going to smash your buddy, you'd probably speak up. But anyway, back to the point, a near miss looks like that. I nearly wiped out the truss on my building because I wasn't thinking about overhead clearance when I pulled in there. You can see the drag mark there. We did ever so slightly kiss the bottom of the truss as we pulled through there. Luckily, they got a little bit of flex to them. That was not catastrophic, but very well could have been. You see, the truck actually has a couple low tires back here. And I almost inflated those before I moved them, but I said, nah, the low tire will actually help me while I'm down here in the mud. That'll give me a little bit better traction. I'll inflate them after I'm up on the rock. If I would have inflated those tires, we'd have been a couple inches higher and probably smashed into that thing. All right, well, sometimes fixing the stupid little things actually can be more rewarding than uh, fixing the entire project. Since I've owned this vehicle, nearly every time I've gotten in and out of it, I've ended up stabbing myself on the rusty remnants of what used to hold the armrest on here. So we're gonna 
fix that real quick. A little bit of Andrew Camerata style interior work. Oh, that's dandy. You think one more for good measure? Probably. That ain't going nowhere. Well, time to see what kind of gravy she's got in the pot. I'm betting it's gonna be pretty thin. Uh, oh yeah, you see how fast it's running out of there. She's thin, very thin. It's already hot too, so it's really gonna fly. Uh-huh, <laughs> shot clear over to run off the leaf spring. Good Lord. No metal chunkage on the uh, the drain plug though, that's good. Well, she's just, she's just peeing. That is a lot of gas in there. <laughs> Enter your laminar flow comments below. At least I think that's how you say it. it. Seems like every time I do an oil change on video, that's all I get is comments about the flow. We got one last thing to do underneath this truck, and that's try to get rid of this god awful belt squeal. I've tightened every other belt up. And this alternator belt is the only one left to get. And of course, it's also the hardest to get to. Uh, yeah. Let me grab an extension and we're going to get this thing tightened up. No wonder I didn't adjust the thing properly. It's quite miserable to do. Oh yeah, that's better. Thank goodness she just stays tight. Let's tighten that adjustment bag up. We should be good to go. All right, well, I'm excited. This thing might not squeal now. I think that was the belt that was causing the issues the whole time. Let's go ahead and dump some oil in this thing and fire it up. days a man just likes to wonder why he does all this stuff I just pulled the truck up here and the little blinky light was gone on the camera when I walked away to go get the truck to pull in here for this shot came back camera had died right as I got out of sight didn't even catch a wink of the truck driving up here I said I'll do take two I'll fire the truck back up and drive back around the corner to get the shot and I hit the ignition and it started up and as soon as I let off the ignition it died again and if you've been following this project for a while, you'll know that's happened before. So pay, pay close attention now to the RPMs and the ignition switch here. Oh, now it's going to work. Oh, this piece of crap. Anyways, what was happening is I was turning the ignition and it would start. And as soon as I would take the key out of the start position, the engine would die like you were shutting it off so what happened last time is that the ignition switch down here on the column probably can't see it anyways that ignition switch went bad and almost a year ago it was november of last year i replaced that 
and I just called the parts store and said, hey, this thing didn't last a year and I barely used the truck. I said, okay, bring it in for a new one, which I appreciate, but you got intermittent issues like this. It's very frustrating. I After I realized I missed the shot and I came back for round two and the truck wouldn't start, I came back here and I could hear air hissing. This tire, old and dry rotted, has just decided to spring a leak in the sidewall here. So, so this tire is pretty much junk. I do have a set of rims and tires on a parts truck uh, that should bolt right onto this thing. So. so I've got some new rear view mirrors to throw on this bad boy and I've got a set of usable headlights in the truck because this one turned into a fishbowl and this one is no bueno. Just realized we should fix this too. This platform, as you can see, it's pretty well bent there. So she needs a little bit of work with the, uh, the old body hammer. quite perfect but it's perfect for what we're doing i'd give that about a 9.5 on the old uh bodywork skill level there all right so in one of the previous videos i discovered that nearly all the bolts on the turntable here and that's what holds the crane onto the frame nearly all those bolts were backed out loose and cross-threaded so i had to pull them all out one by one tap the holes back out and then put the bolts back in and at the time I did not know the proper torque spec and I just snugged them up as best I could with a half inch breaker bar. Since then I have learned the torque spec and had to go buy a new torque wrench for to achieve said torque spec. Oh, now that is a torque wrench. This three quarter drive I got from Tang Tools. I've been looking forward to using this beauty. We gotta torque these uh, bolts to 370 foot pounds. And my current torque wrench didn't do all that high. All right, we got this baby set to 370 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get these things torqued down here. Woo, that's some pressure. There we go. I'm gonna try to stand the boom up, that way I can get to all the bolts a lot easier and we can actually rotate the uh, crane around to get easier access to them. I'm also gonna mark each of these bolts as I torque them. I'll give them one line, will be the first torque sequence, and we're gonna do them all twice. So after the last one's torqued, we're gonna go back around and recheck them. And then at that time, I'll mark them on the side so that I'll be able to see if they ever loosen up. All right, we got all these bolts torqued down to spec. I'm very happy with that. They were actually a lot closer than I thought they were. Didn't take that much to get them into spec. I also added some marks all the way around the base here to let you know when you're perfectly in line to drop down into the cradle. Because when you're standing here and you have the boom up in the air, you kind of get it close, but then at the last second when you're almost into the cradle, you usually have to turn the uh, turn the crane a little bit and extended straight out like that it, it just kind of makes you sway around a little bit so if you can get that baby lined up perfect before you uh, start to lower the boom everything's just smoother that way so that, that should help me out so right there we have the boom all the way down as low as it'll go 
and I want to fix this thing. I don't know what this thing's really called. Stupid stink bugs. Are these things bad where you guys are at? Because they're terrible here. Anyways, this thing needs a weld on it. bezel broke in half so we just gotta put in the half we got looks kind of like an eyebrow well I got both the headlights in there unfortunately this uh, marker light down here housing was sitting on the back of the truck for about a year now and it got broken somewhere along the way so I'll have to locate another one of those but that's not a big deal. Let's uh, hit the switch and see if they all come on. Hey -o! Look at that! We got headlights! I guess that was the high beam. Well we got low beams. Great success! All right, let's move on to the mirrors. Wow, even the taillights work. I might as well put this thing on the road, huh? Well, the next issue to tackle, hard to back up with uh, no mirrors. The glass is gone from these two, and the other one isn't even there. And you'd think you could see behind you, but you really can't see out of the glass at all. Like, nada. So I got us some new mirrors. Let's get these installed. Those look like they're going to need some croil. Whew. That sucker was on there. Well, this is a common problem with mirror brackets. I don't know why they do this, but they don't clamp onto the bar whenever you tighten them. Basically, they just wobble around here, and then you can't ever get them adjusted, right? Because they're always moving every time you hit a bump or slam the door. I think I'm just going to run a self-tapper down through this bracket. This is quick and dirty. If this was like a nice truck <laughs> that I took on the road, I'd, I'd care a bit more about it. But for around the farm, I think I'm just going to run a self-tapper down through the bracket closer to the pinch point there and try to tighten it up that way. There we go. Solid as a rock. Not a very satisfying peel, is it? In fact, it's kind of infuriating. I didn't want to take it off of there until I installed the mirror, but that made it quite a pain to remove. There we go. I prepared that one to be peeled a little bit better. All right, so this tire I heard leaking before, of course it is completely flat now, and I don't suspect it's ever gonna hold air again. And then maybe you can tell 
That tire over there on the inside, she's uh, got a small, small hole that you could stick your fist through on the sidewall there. So she's no bueno. I think it's time she gets some new rims and tires. That exhaust leak is not worth fixing, but I wish I could hear this thing without the exhaust leak like one time. here at the Diesel Creek Tire Farm where the finest black circles are harvested sustainably and ethically all year long. We've got some beautiful Goodyears here on a parts truck that I have and they should slip right onto that guy. So time for the old switcheroo. Going up. Pick this thing right up like it was nothing. Now the reason I have this truck was bad, bad rust. The rust jacking is so bad, the frame is mushroomed up like an inch in places. So, you know these lug nuts are gonna be a real bear to get off. Better soak her down. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good start. Hey, hey, we got one. moved. Look at that. The tire gods are smiling on us today. Maybe. Yeah.
<laughs> Woo! Boy, that sucked. I got my workout for the day. I'm good. Well, good gravy. That was a struggle. Those rims were rusted on to the parts truck, which was a salt truck, and uh, it didn't surprise me. It was a fight to get those off, but at least they could get to both sides of those. These ones I didn't expect to be all that bad, but man, they put up a fight. But <laughs> finally got them on there, and uh, for the first time since I've owned this truck, we should be able to let her down to four inflated tires. That's going to be crazy. So don't ask me why, but I had to walk away from this project for a week now. You might notice the scenery change, but Look at how impressive that is. I promise I have not doctored this at all. That truck, I don't think it's moved an inch since we left it over a week ago. That's pretty darn impressive if you ask me. Um, I really don't see a use in putting back uh, the four other tires back on this truck. If I need to move it, I can just pick it up with a forklift and move it. So I think I'm just going to set one of the, maybe both of the, deflated rims underneath of the pumpkin there set it on that so that it's up off the ground still and uh yeah i like it but the crane is working out fantastic boys and girls i mean i am so happy to see that this thing didn't bleed down even a little bit over the course of a week over a week This video has been a long time coming. 
I've actually owned this truck over a year now, I believe, and I've been using it in various states of repair and disrepair, and I finally got it to a point now where it's turnkey, good enough to run around the farm and accomplish tasks for me. It's already proven itself extremely useful. So if you haven't watched this series all the way from the beginning, the very first video, I went out to the Ritchie Brothers auction and picked this thing up. And I had bought it sight unseen. I just happened to jump onto the app there. At the very last minute, I saw it going cheap. I figured I couldn't go, couldn't go wrong for the money that it was. I really didn't want it, but for the money, how could I say no? And I think it's been a good purchase. I, initially, when I brought it home and the engine was stuck, you know, I really didn't think I wanted this thing. I figured, oh, I'll probably just fix it and boom, right back into the auction and hopefully turn a couple bucks on it. But now that it's been around the farm here for a year, and I've used it so many times, even though it wasn't even really ready to be used, and it still came in very handy. So now that it's turnkey, ready to drive around and actually work around here, um, I think it's going to be very handy, and I don't see myself getting rid of it for quite a while at least. Got all the weight sitting on these tires. They look really good. They're not bulging or squatting or nothing. I don't see any dry rod in them. Both sides look really good, and I tell you what, just to drive it out the driveway here, it's already more stable with four inflated tires rather than uh, one inside and one outside tire inflated. Well, it's been sitting around here at the farm long enough that the uh, auction sticker has peeled and tattered on it. So, you know this project is well marinated, but like a fine wine, I think it turned out really well. I'm quite happy with it. I just washed the windows on the truck before I drove it out here. This was a clean rag. Anyway, I'm sure this truck is going to make plenty of appearances in upcoming videos. I'm sure that I'm going to be using it for all sorts of things that I, I just have no idea right now. But it, it's super handy and I'm glad I have it. It's my hope with some of these videos that maybe the people that don't really think that they could go out and do something like this would be a little less afraid to go out and throw your hat in the ring on something like this and uh, fix it up. And you'll have a really handy toy tool for a fraction of what it would cost for you to go buy outright, let alone rent one for a day or a week or a project or whatever you're doing. Um, is this thing job site ready, OSHA compliant? Not even close. There's still a myriad of things I'd like to fix on it, but in reality, it's good enough for the farm. I can't justify dumping a fortune into this thing just to kick around here and piddle around doing the things I do. I'd like to replace the cable on it. The cable kind of scares me, even though it looks pretty decent. Uh, I would really feel comfortable, um, replacing the entire cable. There is a hydraulic cylinder inside of the boom that extends the boom and in certain positions it leaks hydraulic fluid and you'll know it because all of a sudden it's got hydraulic fluid dripping out the end of the boom while you're trying to lift something. So ideally that's something in the future we would tear down and figure out why that's leaking. I'm imagining it's either a scar on the chrome or just the packing is blown out but it doesn't make sense why it would only do it in one position if that's the case. One of the other things I'd like to do to this truck is of course, pressure wash it, clean it up a bit. And I'd like to paint the boom because obviously somebody primed it at some point and never finished painting it. That's just primer that's on the boom. So let me know what color you guys think I should paint it. And I'm thinking a really nice Diesel Creek decal right down the boom would look really sharp. All right, well, as I mentioned, guys, this video has been a long time in the making and there is a tremendous amount of work that goes into filming a lot of these videos. So do me a favor, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button doesn't cost you guys a dime and it helps me keep producing good content for you guys. Another great way you can help the channel if you'd like, you can go over to dieselcreek.com, buy yourself some sweet merchandise over there. We got a whole store set up for you. And last but certainly not least, if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed so you can see this crane truck and all my other projects in action in future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.